That's right, 20% off. Or on a Tuesday night this week, we called it more, 20% more wrestling. Like, yeah, it doesn't even make sense in terms that of That doesn't make a lick of sense, no. Well, just... the transitions suck, and so does the wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. On to NXT. And I guess we're going to do the uh, the ratings uh, comparison at the end of the thing where we do both of them at the same time. I think so, I think so. I think that'd be the fair way to do it. And again, while AEW had manufactured this this all or nothing, uh, you know, battle for supremacy on a Tuesday night. It because it was important to Tony, and put such emphasis on it instead of, you know, at least leading their fans in with lowered expectations. You know, NXT drew upon its talent pool of some of the biggest names in the business that could come over and do little guest appearances or figure into refereeing or general manager or managing spots or whatever the case that would jazz up the normal NXT presentation, as is their ability and their right, because all these people work for them. So, and basically, again, it's the WWE. You didn't get a long, really athletic match like a Swerve and Danielson, but you got name stars that look like fucking stars that people are goddamn interested in, and you got uh, basically what uh, they do as much as they have to do in the ring to get the point across that they want to make, and they made them all. So, you know, you say kill with kindness or whatever. They'll, one company will bore you practically to death, but at the end of the thing, you remember exactly what they wanted you to remember. And the other company is so goddamn filled with chaos that it is more anxiety that you leave with than anything else. Like, oh shit, I'm shell shocked, all that shit going on. And it's important to note that they didn't just hot shot for the night against AEW. They did a little bit more, but they've been hot shotting just to build up the ratings because they're selling the rights to the show. Yes. And I mean, you know, Becky Lynch has been in and out and Dominic has been cross promoting their North American title on the main programs and blah, blah, blah. So this is kind of a natural progression. And I'll, I'll make a point when we get to the ratings, but let's talk about the, the program. Because they led, again, where Christian Cage is in the truck doing a one-camera, you know, interview, not even interview, but the billboard of the show, Cody music, entrance, huge chance, welcome from the NXT crowd. What does yeet mean? It's a popular expression amongst the youth. Well, they did it. They said that a lot. They said yeet uh, They did a it a lot, yeah, nonstop. And they're asking, basically, I guess, you know, have you have you eaten? Yeet? But nevertheless, he's a Rhodes. He's it's a, it's a good answer. What, what do you want to talk about? Did you eat? Did you eat? It's the only thing you could say. There's no other answer. So what do you guys want to talk about? Yeah! That doesn't answer the question. Well, he, he had a big announcement, is what he did. More than one, as a matter of fact. Um, Eddie, you know, something about the breakout tournaments. I think there's going to be a, a male tournament as well as a female tournament. And then they announced that the Dusty Rhodes tag team tournament will be coming back. And then, by the way, tonight he's had it approved. Cody Rhodes is going to be the special guest general manager of NXT tonight. And, of course, this is the... They're in their performance center or wherever they're at in NXT in Orlando. This is their regular audience, and they, this audience was cooperating with everything, but also in some cases, I think they got a little full of themselves and decided to go into business for themselves and be part of the special show, too. But all of this is, and it's Cody, he's the biggest baby face to business. But then out came. Our boy Ilya Dragunov, and that's what when he when when Ilya gets in the ring, the fans chanted "Happy Birthday" at him. 
I think they probably could have let the poor guy do his promo instead of chanting happy birthday at him. Can I say something to you before you get going? Yes. I've enjoyed Ilya's matches when I've seen him. I was kind of disappointed he spoke perfect English. Here. Well, that's, but therein lies the problem. He speaks pretty perfect English, but it's still a second language to him legitimately because he is from Russia or that, that part of the, the world. So, yeah, it is kind of a letdown because he still... Uh, Elia has always wanted to meet Cody, and he put him over and how great he was. And, again, this is the NXT champion, and he's such a little fireball, a Tasmanian devil in the ring, but he's so polite and soft-spoken and perfectly spoken and looking up to Cody. I wasn't a fan of the way he was presented here. But then... Dominic came out and knocked Elia. And now the fans, I thought it was Memphis that they yelled, whoop that trick. But now is that spreading around the world as well? Yeah. Well, apparently Dominic is a trick that the fans wanted to, to see whooped. And Elia said that he could turn a barking dog into a sweet little puppy. So the challenge was asked and answered. It was kind of long. I was hoping they'd get to it. And finally, when Cody got the opening, he made the match for tonight with Dominic and Ilya. And the special referee will be L.A. Knight. So, again, in the first segment of this show, they got the most popular babyface in the business taking over the show, validating their title match, and sticking maybe the second most popular guy into it as a special referee. Not a bad way to open the program. Not a bad way in terms of star power and everything, but it sucked. I mean, no one says anything. Nothing happens. It's just oh, like, yeah. a, it's like a mini raw. Now your music plays and you come out and I'm going to insult you with really <laughs> corny insults. Yeah, I will tame you, you dog. No, come on. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's nice but... for WWE, but to me it was lame. Well, of course, because it's WWE, but it made sense. And there's and that's what people are looking for, is to understand what the fuck's going on and see some stars, they know who the fuck they are. At this point, that's all we can hope for. I, I hope, I still hope for natural speaking. You know, that's the thing. I just want people to be able to do all of this. Book it all the same <laughs> way. Just let them talk in a natural way. I don't know if Cody can in real life, to be honest with you. But... So Everyone else, just speak in a normal way instead of telling them what to say and they go out there and they try to remember it and then they spit it out. It never sounds good even when it sounds, even when they read it right or say it right. So I just think, let these guys talk natural. Did you see how they were standing there? When Elia was talking to Cody, Elia was practically, had his back turned to Cody and looking over his shoulder at him, talking to him so he could open up for the hard camera. I don't know, it was so unnatural looking. Everyone seemed uncomfortable. But speaking of discomfort, did you watch Roxanne Perez versus Oscar? I didn't because there was so much. It was Tuesday night and originally we were going to record a few days ago. So I tried yeah. to get it all in quickly. I didn't watch it. And then all of that all night gas station opened up down the road. And by the way, the people probably never even noticed today where we stopped this program so that you could have the infinity people come over and run you a new line from the goddamn road. Xfinity. Anything else you're disagreeing well, with? They've been very nice. I mean, I'm unhappy that since they updated everything, the service has been spotty. However, they sent out a well-equipped, knowledgeable technician who was very interested in making sure Eddie, I was how happy. How do you know how well-equipped he was? He had a truck filled with nuts and bolts. I don't know what the hell's going on out there. Well, I'm telling you, if he brought in his big, heavy nuts, I'm sure he was well-equipped. Well, it's not completely fixed, but hopefully it will be soon. Or else. Well, what are we talking about? Why are we... What were we talking we're, about? We're going back to uh, Oscar beat Roxanne Perez. Did you watch it? No. And then Shotzi jumped in and beat up another girl. I don't know who she was. And then there was a VTR of Heyman arriving in his big black SUV. And he gets out and, of course, can't find the right door and is, is very indignant about that. Does he do comedy the right way for wrestling because he's not in any way, a comedic character. Yeah, because 
it's funny because you think that it's legitimately happening to him and you like to see funny things happen to pompous people. He's not out there, you know? Adam! Anyway, should we talk about the the pub rules match, which... <laughs> I was dying to know if you watched this. I, di I didn't watch all of it. I fast-forwarded some of it, obviously, but I had to get the the grip on what they were doing because I guess in a... In some kind of concession to the AEW audience, they think, well, if we do a garbage wrestling match, then the people who like to watch garbage wrestling will watch this show, but good God. It was three guys with really thick accents and dressed in blah clothing, screaming about their match, and then Butch and Ridge and Tyler Bate, they couldn't have Seamus in this thing started yelling about bangers. And then they had a, a six-man pub rules match, all six in the ring, no rules, no disqualification, lazy booking, with beer glasses and dartboards and uh, beer kegs and garbage cans and cue sticks. And it was a jump start 100 miles an hour in the entrance way and just phony fucking shit. They did the fire extinguisher spot in the first two minutes. They had a bowling ball. Butch stuck a dart in some guy's fucking hand. It was a visual shit show. And it looked even more corny and phony and fake than the normal garbage matches they have in AEW where they use furniture and all that shit because... WWE has the idea they've got to set the place up like a game show and have silly looking props. So this was AEW level bad with WWE level bad set dressing. And then somebody got power bombed through a bar and some peanuts and Sounds like a they... Saturday night. <laughs> In Newport. Do they do these matches on NXT normally, or is this was this just for any of the AEW audience to feel at home somehow with this shit? Yeah, do they do any of these matches in pubs? That's my other question. Was, I think that's what it was. You know, this other than I guess Butch and Ridge, although I kind of don't see them at that level. This is one of the only things on the show without main roster support, like big star main roster support. It so, needed it. So it was just a big garbage match to throw up against AEW. Well, and then they didn't even chant, we want tables. When they pulled out a table, the fans chanted, table, table, like it was one of the talents. And then they did, uh, well, they at one point they were doing the holy shit chant, the crowd, and you would think that the the fucking hometown audience down there that's regulars that's there all the time, they could tell them, don't say shit. Because the network is bleeping it. They're better bleepers than the AEW sound crew, but they're still, they're bleeping shit. And they're saying shit on the other channel and they're trying to bleep fuck and can't. Anyway, uh, he all got powerbombed through a table. One, two, three. <sighs> I can't add it. I don't like these kind of matches. Yeah. There was a time I did, you know, if you were someone who like talked to me when I was a teenager, you're probably like, you're a hypocrite. Because every now and then you'd see a match like this, like the Nasty Boys against Cactus Jack and Max Payne or Cactus and Kevin Sullivan. And it was like, wow, I've never seen anything else like that. Now you see it all the time. So it just. Like, well, no yeah, it's OK to like it when you don't ever see anything else like it. Yeah. Now it's just it's every if every match was the alley fight match, I probably wouldn't have liked the alley fight match as much. Because then if everybody was seven feet, you'd have no giants. That's right. But you know who's a giant in the industry? No. John fucking Cena. John Cena's a giant in the industry, and out he comes and the roof comes off. Because they've never even seen Cena. They can't see him. In NXT, think about this. He predates NXT. He was in OVW. So he's... From the previous generation, they never got a chance to love and squeeze and hug on him and call him George. So he put over the big uh, 
the big night and milked the fans and everything and put NXT over and gave a big rah-rah speech. And then Braun Breaker's music hit. And this was, again, who looks like, who of the, the rookies, this new crop, who looks like Braun Breaker? Nobody. He's a fucking superstar just standing there. Plus the talent. Plus he's not rattled. He's fucking, he's talking to one of the big names in the business. And he don't give a shit. He's not intimidated. Maybe he needs to cool it with the fake tan though. Well, he is a little dark, you know, but I, but he's in Florida. Maybe he's one of those people. He's orange. He, maybe he's just out there all the time with, you know, slathering fucking, I can't believe it's not butter on himself. But anyway, uh, the fans start chanting bullshit. And so it bleeps some of his promo along with it. But, it, you know, a confrontation with John Cena and Braun Breaker. And then Cena says, good luck, and offers his hand. And Braun nails him, boom, and goes for a spear. And Cena ducks, goes for the AA, and Breaker slips out to the floor. So we've milked, you know, a little something's going to happen later on in the big title match. What do you think of our boy Braun confronting Mr. Cena? Again, I wish it was a little more natural, but I thought he was good. He sounds just like a Steiner. I mean, yeah. just, just a mix of the two Steiners. He sounds like that. There was one part, I don't remember the exact setup, but it did make me laugh, where he was talking about, I guess maybe him and NXT he goes, I'm here every week. I haven't seen you. And Cena goes, you can't. And then he, <laughs> yeah. they moved on. They didn't even like reference it or anything, but it was such a funny throwaway line. It got me. <laughs> that got me that was good but there's going to be problems later on you can tell so that baron von corbin is now in nxt i can't believe they didn't release him when they released all those other people but uh he did a promo i didn't listen to it because we don't care i wanted to get to the nine o'clock hour and that was la night and his entrance with his referee shirt under his vest that looked ridiculous. Come on. But and, and it's so stupid. <laughs> because then everybody, oh, look at LA Knight, man. He don't give a shit. And then it's the NXT title match with Elia against Dominic Mysterio. Rhea Ripley is in the corner. And I we we love Elia because he he has the great facials and he's a great worker. And at, at his size, he's like the Tasmanian devil where you can it's not just like he's you know, one of the buckaroos popping up from everything. You know, it looks like it's hurting him, but the one thing about his presentation, does the Zsa, Zsa Gabor robe fit his... Shouldn't he be out there in like a fucking, I don't know, a Russian farmer's outfit or something? I don't know. But that robe just tickled me. And it, it enveloped him, all the... The fluffiness and the feathers and everything. I'm happy whenever you see a male wrestler in a robe nowadays. You never see well, it anymore. That's true. It is It is refreshing. But, I, you know, I like this. Elias throws his style. We've talked about it. It's different, but it's interesting. And Dominic, it was clearly the heel here, obviously, but he knows how to work as a heel. And his work, to me, is greatly improved. Remember I said... The other day, I'd have watched it if I could tell, but he had one of the acrobatic opponents. Well, here, you can tell. They still gave it the WWE treatment where they go to the break in two minutes. Uh, but when they, when they came back to the, to the meat of the match, this is where I thought that the crowd decided they're going to take over because they started doing the yeah nonstop when the guys are trying to have the match because L.A. Knight's the referee. And then later on, when Ilya started making his comeback, the crowd at one point started chanting, you fucked up, and I think at Dominic. But again, they had to bleep him. And uh, with Ring of Honor, when we went on Sinclair, I came out at the start of the night, you may have been there a few, and said, hey, we want you to cheer, boo, yell, scream, express yourself however you want, but don't make it to where we can't use this on television. This is important to us, and we can't afford to post everything. So if you want to be on 
television don't say fuck. And I don't know why they don't do that here in, in because this is getting to be a thing everywhere now. And they're going to have problems with the networks because they're already trying to bleep it and can't. Anyway, Elia has a lot of fire. And finally, he made his big comeback and boom, boom, boom. And he hit his power bomb and his forearm. And then suddenly, here came Finn and Funko, two other members of the Judgment Day. And LA Knight dumped them. But then here was Trick. You remember Trick? He was Carmelo's friend last time we watched. He was bout it, bout it, I think. He, he was bout it, bout it. Well, he finally got here. And then he was with it, with it. And he grabbed Rhea off the apron. And Elia hit a big elbow, one, two, three, and got a big pop beating Dominic. And again, you know, that was a good deal. And LA Knight served his purpose. And then. You know, L.A. powders, and Dominic is gone, and Corbin comes out to confront Elia, but Dominic Dijakovic comes from behind and levels Elia before Corbin can get to him and tells Corbin he's mine. So we kind of branched off back into NXT business there. It was a good match. You know, I think, unfortunately, this is where some of the not inadequacies, but some of Dominic's what's the lack of polish in the ring come out <laughs> in moments like this, you know, maybe it wasn't the perfect opponent for him, but you know, I think it was good. And I think also it's good Dominic being here because he kind of has been brought up on the main roster. I think being in NXT can only help him, uh, you know, not being in NXT like full time, but going right. down there and working as one of the main guys on the show is something that really helps him. Rhea obviously helps him a lot. Rhea had a very interesting look this night with her hair. <laughs> Good match. And, you know, again, LA Knight is being presented now as, if not the top babyface in the company, up there on an equal tier with a Cody Rhodes or a Jey Uso. Well, and speaking of the top tier of folks, they didn't they weren't finished with Cena yet. He had to get Carmelo Hayes over, and they're in the back talking on a, you know, a peer group level. And then Trick came in and introduced himself, and apparently there is tension between Trick and Carmelo, even though they used to be friends, and Trick may still be about it, about it, but there's problems with them. So then Cena and Trick leave to talk. So they're... <laughs> Again, they're putting these guys in with Cena and the, and the stars so that they can rub elbows as peers rather than little flunkies. And speaking of stars instead of little flunkies, Jane Cargill <laughs> arrives in another almost their outfit and shakes hands with Shawn Michaels. And they start talking and walk into the bed. We never see what happens once she walks into the building, but she arrives in style. And while talking to Shawn Michaels, she looked him straight in the eyes and she had a headache ever since. Oh, come on now. <laughs> she just got a little dizzy. It, it, it passed quickly. And then Baron Corbin was telling Cody to make a match with him and Elia for the title for Halloween Havoc. And Cody came up with Corbin has to win a triple threat match next week. Hey, real quick, and I don't know if you're going to cover it. If so, we'll just skip past what I'm going to say. Did you see whatever it is, the, uh, I forget what the name of it is, the university segment they do? Yeah, well, that's coming up in a okay, sec. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's, I didn't skip it. I'm, I'm not going to spend much time on it, but I didn't skip it. Because then we had to go to another British guy insulting Dominic in the back. And we love our friends across the pond. But uh, can we pick like four or five instead of 20 guys that all look approximately the same size with the same kind of haircut and sound the same and fucking do the same things? Because over on the other channel, it's the the Hispanic group. And, and here it's the, the folks from the United Kingdom. Uh, but then Lola Vice with Electra Lopez in her corner wrestle Danny Palmer and whatever Lola wants Lola gets so Lola won 
and it didn't look anything like my Aunt Lola, so I'm thinking about suing for copyright infringement. And then was the Chase universe. They're still doing this. And one of the Bravado brothers is Andre Chase, and they wear the sweaters, and this is... This is horrible, fake, silly, and childish on an AEW level and still isn't as bad as the Adam Cole, Roderick Strong stuff. But why are they? I don't know. What, what could be the audience for this? What, what is the 8- to 12-year-old demographic on NXT? Is there a big pool of those that they got to talk to with these things? That's insulting. I have kids. I don't think my kids would like something as banal. Uh, I, thought it, I thought it was banal. It depends. Some people say banal. Some people say banal. Well, but if you take the B off, there's only one way to say it. Well, I'll go back with insipid. I don't know if they said it because it was purposely wrong, but they said there was that Dusty Rhodes was the inventor of Halloween Havoc. Oh, yeah, I heard that too. And, I, and obviously the first Halloween Havoc took place nine months after he had left WCW. Right. So, but don't let that stand in the way of a good story. All right, I've I've got a I'm going to go out of chronological order here because I want to put all the Braun Breaker in the same place, but I want to talk about the Brian Pillman Jr. package because a lot of people were talking about it on Twitter. They they have taken him and twisted this from what the expectations were of a second generation wrestler, the Brian Pillman Jr. smiling baby face and turned it completely around. I like it because it's not only is it a nice little twist on what you would expect, but it's true. He was so young when, when Brian died that he, he didn't know his father. He didn't grow up being influenced by his father. He was raised by a stepfather, but they're doing the psychological thing where he doesn't want to be compared to his father. He's not that guy. He's his own man. And he looks single white femaleish like his fucking dad, right? That's the point. That it, it's, it's going to be the, the psychological trauma being pulled in both directions. He can't get out of the shadow of his father and escape him even though he wants to, but he's doing everything he can to look like him, but he changes his name to his real father figure's name, King. I don't know about Alexa sounds like, it sounds like one of the girls, though, doesn't it? Someone told me he was after his sister. I don't know if that's true. Her name was well, Alexis. Yes. Yeah. But Lexus King sounds like one of the fucking girls. I, I, it's not that's that's my know, biggest problem with the whole thing. Even if you want to go down this road of him denouncing his father, if he's gonna change his name, it has to be a good name. Yeah, Le Lexus King to me doesn't. I don't do mind it. the King. Not sure about the Lexus. It's why? Just why not just music. Brian King? If that's the case, that could have been a thing. Maybe it'll be my thing. Well, you keep your thing to yourself because. But anyway, I like the package, and I, I'm again. You know, they could have portrayed Brian as a wonderful, sympathetic baby face in AEW back a while back, and in that you know, kind of with the dark side episode and et cetera. And then that opportunity passed and he was just floating. So now somebody's doing something with him and in record time, by the way, to see whether he's going to get over or not, because he's not had a, a chance to this point to really do anything in any major place that would catch on. So he's got that. Yeah, and AEW, who's just another guy running around on that show, it just so happens that his name was catchy because you remember his dad, but he was never really used in an effective way, and they certainly never capitalized on anything when they could. Quickly, WWE's done more, even though I'm not a fan of this name change. And mostly he was a babyface. So bringing him in as a heel, maybe you'll tap into something we haven't seen yet with him. And, and at the same time, Again, you've got to to have a chance. He he was tag team partners with Griff Garrison. Poor fella. Looks like a fucking six foot tall Q tip. And the varsity blondes. What? Because they looked like they were college age, and Brian's father was a fucking college athlete. I mean, it was just it was gaga. 
this is something you might be able to hook into. But, but, but if I could just say one last thing, but again, what message are you sending to anyone in AEW who you're interested in when their contract's up? Between Jade Cargill, Cody Rhodes, now even Pillman Jr. Every single person, I mean, I'm trying to think of who would have been the opposite, who has come back from AEW, uh, the OC, but that's a different kind of thing altogether. But everyone who's come from AEW, They've been treated much better here than AEW ever treated them. Well, it's kind of, they're probably seeing it now as, okay, we can be here in high school, and at least we've got a job, but the what we need to aspire to is go to college and learn how to do this shit for real. And that's what they're doing. Or, in the case of Cody, who already knew, it's go to a place where I can actually do this shit for real. Yeah, because Cody, if Cody had stayed with AEW, if him and Tony had been able to heal the issues and Cody had stayed there... He'd be miserable today. Well, either that or he'd be on, you know, the opposite side of a campaign by the Buckaroos because he was getting too big for his britches. And they'd have to punk him out of the company, so to speak. So to speak. So to speak. But anyway, so let's let's go to the main event because uh, I went out of order a little bit. The Pillman package came after an interview in the back with Paul Heyman and Braun Breaker. And Paul does his thing. He mentioned... Braun's father and uncle, but not by name. And he says that Braun's got the best of both and he can see the future, but he's the wise man, not because he recognized the past, but because he can see the future. And Braun Breaker's the main event of WrestleMania. And then he gives him the big pep talk. The only thing in your way is Carmelo Hayes. And Braun says, I'm going to go through him or Cena or anybody. And he walks out and Paul gets the big smile and calls Roman Reigns on his phone. Or anybody. Or calls anybody. No, I'm saying it could be Roman Reigns eventually. Now what? He said he'll go through anybody. Anybody would mean Paul. Uh, any, oh, okay. Anybody I would see. need Roman Reigns. Yes, but, that, but we're, we're early for that. Yes. Yes. That's why you jumped in early. Yes. So then when they got to the match, Actually, Cena and Hayes entered, like, entered the arena and apparently were there for 10 minutes because that's where they went to the Pillman package and then they had a bunch more girls talking in the back. But they finally came back to the ring and Paul came out and gave a big introduction to Braun Breaker and he gets the big entrance. And again, everything that Heyman said was true and they know it. He is a WrestleMania main eventer and probably three years he is a future superstar and they're that's why they're doing what they're doing now because they're planning for the future instead of just say oh well yeah one of these days we'll we'll have a real good idea for him and we'll push him so it's Braun Breaker with Heyman against Carmelo Hayes with Cena and they've got an an overrun too here of eight minutes on NXT so the match was speed versus strength in a way, but Braun Breaker, did you see when he got revved up running the ropes? He ran the ropes with more speed than anyone I could think of in recent memory. Yes, and and I'm telling you, he's got that... It, Scott's body was better. Rick Steiner was more explosive in his movement. Braun's got both of them. He's got everything. Of course, they went to break in under two minutes, but when they came back, you got at least of enough of a look at what Braun's doing these days. He got heat on the guy's back. He's aggressive. He's, he's both smooth and manhandles people at the same time. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Carmelo Hayes is great. I agree. He was very good. And he's very athletic. He does nice stuff. Braun Breaker is the superstar, clearly. And then finally, um, he taunt Braun taunted Cena a little bit, trying to do the you can't see me, and ended up going too far as a heel and eating a super kick. And at one point, Braun gave Carmelo something off the top rope. I don't know what it meant to be or what he meant to do, but it 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 looked devastating. And then they did the deal with uh, Braun hitting his press and power slam for a two count. 
and then going out to get the stairs. And that's where Cena comes around and snatches the them away from him and kicks Braun Breaker in the balls where the referee didn't see it. And Solo immediately hops onto Cena, comes out and hops on him, and they fight off. So then Carmelo hit a move on the floor and then a leg drop off the top rope onto Braun Breaker, but while Braun Breaker was still standing up, and they need to work on that one a little bit because it mostly missed him. And th that was it, one, two, three. So they had to put Carmelo over. They weren't switching the belt. They gave Cena the, you know, the opportunity of giving Braun the out by having Cena kick him in the balls. I would have loved for the leg drop finish to be anything else that looked good. But it wasn't a bad match. And again, you know... It just, it's a matter of how long they're going to wait before they really start elevating Braun, but he's going to be there. No doubt. Wasn't a bad match. And I think Braun's ready to be called up. He's been in NXT now a while. What's it been, two years, a year and a half? I mean, he's been yeah. there a while as a top guy there. I, think I would have to think he's ready. Ilya has to be close to ready if they're ever going to do it with him. They seem they're like Carmelo Hayes a lot. So we'll see what happens. I mean, how much of this show was an introduction of these people to a bigger WWE crowd? I mean, eventually these people have to move up. Otherwise, I mean, if NXT is not going to have people move up, that means NXT is a third <laughs> brand and it's just going to continue on like that. It doesn't make sense. It well, I, th I think, and I think Braun's going to be sooner than later from the looks of it. But, uh, but that was the match. And then after Carmelo won, Braun hit a spear and started cutting a promo, and then we got Gong. And the, the Undertaker was never advertised, but he was teased, correct? They never said he's going to be there, but they did the teases that would lead you to believe that. At the end of the trailer or the commercial for the, uh, yes, the NXT trailer. show, they had the Gong. So you didn't see him, yeah. but you heard the sound. Well, we didn't actually get The Undertaker. We got the American badass riding the motorcycle with the music from Kid Insurrection. So, thankfully, they didn't advertise The Undertaker. It just, it's kind of a letdown for me because it's not The Undertaker. But nevertheless, they got, uh, they got Braun Breaker and The Undertaker in the goddamn ring same place, same time, for Braun to bow up and call him an old-timer and say there's only one badass here. And then Undertaker says, well, you are going to be the guy one day, but it ain't going to be today. And then he nailed him and choke slammed him. And then he gave Braun the advice, there's always an older, bigger badass, and you just met him. And imagine that, all of that, made the eight-minute overrun. It's amazing how that happens. But the, again, a lot of people are going to say, well, why did he choke slam? It's still, it's Braun Breaker and The Undertaker. For Braun Breaker to be interacting with The Undertaker, to have that clip, it moves him up even if he got choke slammed. And, you know, they, they started with Cena. They ended with Undertaker. They had Paul Heyman, or I'm sorry, started with Cody. Cena was in the middle, finished with Undertaker, had Heyman involved in that. Solo was there, Rhea, Dominic. You know, you got star power and the three things that happened over the course of the night that they really want you to remember easily stood out because, as normal, nothing much else happens. And there you go. Actually, before we get to anything else, I do want to ask you, you want star power. You want stars to interact with future stars. Hopefully it's in a way that they get elevated, not beat down, because we've seen that too many times in the past. Right. I like the idea of Braun Breaker interacting with The Undertaker, but what purpose does it really serve for him to take a bump for someone he's never going to have a match with? Because it was just, again... It was a chance for, I know it, it violates the rules of old time pro wrestling, you know, get heat on, you know, the heel or the young guy or whatever, but 
The Undertaker's an icon. He doesn't fucking deal with, he doesn't interact with the company mascot. He's not out there fucking doing a deal with Otis or whatever. You're taken as a big star when you're interacting with these guys. That's what the majority of the WWE audience feels. So Braun Breaker will have his time where he will get to lay out at whatever point that is, the closest thing they've got to a legend that can be laid out. And, you know, it'll go on from there. But in the meantime, they're just rubbing these people up against stars. And obviously, as we can tell by the ratings, and we'll talk about in a minute, that worked. They won. They not only won, they fucking hammered the other guys with names and a big-time presentation if not a lot of you know stake to the sizzle but imagine if the show had ended with instead of the undertaker coming out there as the undertaker or as the american badass what if he had come out there with some really comfortable fine looking clothes well you know that's the thing because the american badass he doesn't look comfortable he doesn't look comfortable in his clothing whereas the undertaker looked like well that was something he was so comfortable in he could be buried in it but I'll tell you what, folks, whether you want to pick out an outfit to just wear around the house, something to wear out in public, or something to be laid out and have words spoken over you in, I'm telling you, I've found the clothing that is the most comfortable of all time, especially the T-shirts, but all of their stylish closet staples. The folks at Marine Layer, our friends out there in Northern California, the amazing company that is now the go-to brand for great fitting and stylish clothes, the perfect mix of laid-back style that looks and feels premium. I got one of the fleece long sleeve t-shirts slash, I hate to call it a sweatshirt, because you don't really sweat in it. It's so soft. It's fleecy. And it's wonderful for fall weather. It keeps the chill off, and at the same time, it doesn't make you feel like a baked potato wrapped in plastic put in a microwave oven. But the t-shirts. Brian, you got one. I know I got one. I got one for Stace, as a matter of fact, that was reminiscent of her Northern California home. And these things, are it's like you washed them a million times, but they still look brand new. It's that sweet spot. You know, Brian, it was an old Native American trick. The old women in the tribe, they would take the the T-shirts of all the Native American warriors and they would take them down to the stream and they'd hit them with rocks and they'd rub them with pine cones and they'd wash them a million pine times cones. until they were soft. Why would they use pine cones? Wouldn't that make it the opposite? Wouldn't it put sticky substances on it? No, a pine cone is all rough. That's why you don't use them out in the woods for when you've got to use the bathroom. But they're sticky if you pick them up and try to grab one and like throw it like, you know, at your friends. Well, then that, you get uh, sap you, on your hand. What are you throwing pine cones at your friends? What if you want to sell it to your neighbor, but you don't feel like walking up the street? You throw a pine cone at him. Just beat him in the head with a pine cone. Well, that's why they put him in the stream afterwards and then beat him with rocks. Well, anyway, Not we're, the old women, the T-shirts. We're talking about these wonderful shirts, and you were right. I did get some clothing. I got three amazing shirts. They're so comfortable. One of them has these really stylish racing stripes up and down the arms. I feel like I'm a member of the 86 Mets. Were the 86 Mets fleet on their feet? Well, they had racing stripes. They were quick. They were just, they were running hurdles or what? Well, they were fleet on their feet, but in the eighties, the, a lot of the uniforms had racing stripes. They got rid of that in the nineties. Uh, well, that's because NASCAR complained, but back to Marine layer, I got this wonderful weekend travel bag with fine quality workmanship. And it, it just looks wonderful. It's very stylish. Good. Why don't you go away for the weekend? Well, I'm, I'm about to go away from you, but that could, I could just hang up. Hey, Nevertheless, don't do that. They've got fun stuff. They've got stylish stuff. And they've even got sizes like Marge, which is a size in between medium and large, so you can narrow down that perfect fit. And if you buy any three tees from Marine Layer, you automatically get 20% off. So you can get one for you and another one for you and then another one for you and screw everybody else. But... They've also got overshirts, pants, jackets, all the cozy layers that you want for the cooler season coming up. And right now, all you got to do is go to Marine Layer. That's Marine as in Gomer Powell was in the Marine Layer, L-A-Y-E-R, 
marinelayer.com, marinelayer.com, and get 15% off with the code JCE15. Now, I believe I've discovered a loophole. Because if you buy three tees from Marine Layer, you automatically get 20% off. But then if you use the code JCE15 at marinelayer.com, you get 15% off. Jump in here. Some way you're going to get some free shit. You will receive a nice discount of so you've confused me at this point yeah see you're gonna you, if you work it right ladies and gentlemen that's a lot of 15 percent, 20 percent these percentages add up you could con these people i'm pretty sure that our smart listeners no no i'm pretty sure just jack these people around for all kinds of merchandise i'm pretty sure no one should be conning the fine sponsors especially one making fine shirts like marine lair don't con them in the traditional sense or in the modern sense of just tweeting at them nonstop. don't con them Oh, con is a verb now. Yes. Oh, well, in that case, folks, this is a limited time now that our listeners get an exclusive 15% off discount with the code JCE15 at marinelayer.com. You already get 20% if you buy three tees. These things are comfortable. I'm telling you, it's softer than toilet paper. 15% off with the code JCE15 at marinelayer.com. You'll love wearing this stuff wherever you go with it. It really is nice. I have to say, I've enjoyed wearing this new uh, array of clothing the last few days. Very the, soft. the clothing array. What is the promo code? One more time, Jim. JCE15. 